Oh man, it didn't work. It never works. And I really wanted to go to the beach. Well, the whole turning anything I want to gold thing didn't work out, obviously. And on the bright side though, me and the cat are talking again. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, you just kind of had to be there. Anyways, on my ongoing search for my identity, I thought I would give teleportation a try. Teleporter man, at your service. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to teleport anywhere, no matter how hard I try. But I have one more idea that just might work. Okay, okay, okay. Now, you guys are gonna need to close your eyes. Right, close them. Are they closed? Good. Three, two, one. <laughs> what do you know? It worked! I teleported from that spot to this spot! Okay, okay, you've got me. I can practically hear you yelling at me from over there. Hey, it, you didn't teleport, you just walked over from there to here to trick us! You're right, but let's not talk about the fact that some of you had your eyes open. I'm sorry for trying to trick you. Please forgive me. I guess teleportation isn't part of my identity. But hey, this reminds me of a true story in the Bible about the Redeemer, Jesus, healing a paralyzed man and forgiving him of his sins. His friends needed to get him close to Jesus, but there was no way in, and they didn't teleport him. So do you know what they did? <laughs> it was crazy! Stay tuned for more. I'm gonna go read about this true story in the Bible, and then continue to try to find out my true identity. See you later. Jesus of Nazareth. I saw what you did to the leper on the road this morning. My friend has been paralyzed since childhood. He has no hope but you. Please, do for him what you did for the leper. That's a rope! Put it back, man! If you are willing, Rabbi, I know you can do this. your tablet at least. Harry! Is he in danger? I don't know. No, I don't think so. He's got whom in there? Yes. Can you believe we're really here for this? Yes. Down. By whose authority do you teach? Answer me. If you are willing, Rabbi, you know you can. Hey, I'm talking to you. By whom do you teach? Certainly not the authority of any rabbi from Nazareth. Where did you study? Your faith is beautiful. Son, take heart. 
your sins are forgiven. Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right? But I ask you, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk? It's easy to say anything, no? But to show you, and so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, I say to you, my son, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. There he was, paralyzed and unable to move, just laying on his mat after his friends had lowered him through the roof of the house. <laughs> and Jesus told him to stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man, unable to walk for who knows how long, <laughs> gets up, grabs his mat, and walks out. Just like that. He was instantly healed. What? It was a miracle. But the man's physical healing it is just one part of this amazing true story. And I would dare to say it's not even the most important part. Don't get me wrong. Jesus giving the paralyzed man the ability to walk again was amazing. But what Jesus did right before that was a much bigger deal. And it's the first time we can read about during well, Jesus' entire ministry where people got to see that the Redeemer has the power to forgive sin. Let me show you. This true story is found in the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke in the New Testament part of the Bible. We will be looking specifically on Mark's version of what happened. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. That's Mark 12, 4 and 5. The paralyzed man had more than a walking problem. He had a sin problem. Everyone in that house that day except Jesus had a sin problem. They all made choices that disobeyed God. But Jesus looked at the paralyzed man and told him that his sins were forgiven. Boom, just like that. Well, that upset some of the teachers of the religious law who immediately thought to themselves that Jesus was being blasphemous or acting against God by claiming to be able to forgive sins. Only God himself can forgive sin. But that's the thing, Jesus is God. 
The religious teachers just didn't realize that yet. Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he, and he asked them this, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. <sighs> only God can forgive someone of all of their sins, and only God can miraculously heal people. Jesus proved right there in front of all those people that he really is God. Jesus forgave the man of his sins and then healed him so that he could walk. And, and, and he not only has the authority and power to heal physical problems, but also spiritual ones as well. And that's why our bottom line is true. The Redeemer has the power to forgive sin. Let's say that together. The Redeemer has the power to forgive sin. Have you guys ever flown a kite before? You know, <laughs> maybe you've, uh, you know, held the string while the wind causes the kite to soar and dive and much to your delight, it's, it's so much fun to watch, but, but then maybe the kite goes into a nose dive and it crashes into the ground hard. And you walk over to the kite, fearing the worst, and oh no. The closer you get, you see that the kite has taken on some damage that will, will prevent it from flying. And with sadness in your eyes, you take the broken, crumpled kite your parent or your guardian and they smile and they gently take the kite from your hands assuring you that everything is going to be just fine. You watch as they carefully smooth out the wrinkles and they repair the tears in the fabric and they connect the support pieces and they untangle the line and after a little bit of time they hand the kite right back to you and you can't even believe your eyes. Look at that. It's just like brand new. The kite has been restored. Instead of being thrown out or just completely destroyed, it's, it's been redeemed. <laughs> That's how it was for the paralyzed man. Jesus not only redeemed his body by restoring his ability to walk, but he also redeemed the man's soul by forgiving him of his sins. That power to forgive sin is how Jesus redeems all of us. Remember, we all have a sin problem. Sin is anything that we do that disobeys God. The Bible tells us that the punishment of our sin for our sin is being separated from God forever. Yuck, hate that. But good news, the Bible also tells us that Jesus made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins so that we wouldn't have to pay the price ourselves. Jesus redeemed us by paying for our sin with his own life and he made a way for our broken relationship with God to be restored and be made new again. Do you remember our memory verse? Here it is. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. That's Ephesians 1, 7. Jesus is the reason you and I can be forgiven of our sin. When we choose to tell God we're sorry for our disobedience and ask forgiveness, he promises to give us that forgiveness. The religious teachers in this true story were right about one thing. Only God can forgive people of their sins. But they were wrong in not understanding and believing that Jesus is God. And because Jesus is God, he has the power of God. The Redeemer has the power to forgive sins. All right, say it with me again. The Redeemer has the power to forgive sin. So you know what? I think maybe I'll go take this kite and fly it later on to remember what we've learned about the Redeemer today. Hopefully, I won't also have to practice my tree climbing skills, if you know what I mean. All right, have a great day.